Welcome back to another episode of Dr. Taste Good Barbecue. What I have for you today. Today we're going to be doing up a turkey breast on the Only Fire Outdoor Santa Maria attachment for the Weber kettle using the rotisserie. Enjoy. <laughs> Here we go. So this is the first official rotisserie cook I've done on this. I did do a rotisserie chicken on it. It turned out great, but uh, technical difficulties means that video never got produced here. So I got about a five pound breast here and using the rotisserie system. I'm so excited to show you guys this. I will do a rotisserie chicken uh, in the future for you guys. And I'll talk about that fiasco that I had creating that video in a future live stream just so you don't think I'm missing out. So I already got my fire lit. We're going to get this turkey breast prepped out. Should be about perfect timing. Get it over on the grill. So kind of unexpected there. This is my first time doing this and it came in a uh, mesh little bundle I guess so two trains of thought just going through my head real quick number one just leave it in there and roll with it number two cut it out and just try to mash everything together because it looks to me like it's in multiple pieces in there or else they wouldn't have had that that there so my decision quick decision and I know it's gonna be wrong so feel free to hit me up in the comments but I'm gonna leave the mesh on there and take my chances so Let's get it seasoned up. Today we are using the Wren's Barbecue and Spices The Experience. Again, we've patted it dry here, leaving that mesh on. Hey, what can go wrong? And dock, everything can go wrong. Yeah. I just screwed up there, didn't I? Alright, we're going fairly heavy, then we'll pop it on the, the rotisserie spit here, pry a little more to it, yeah, it just feels to me that it's in multiple, like multiple pieces in there. So there you go. So I kind of eyeballed this baby. I think I have my one set where it should be. Just kind of feed her through. Like so. There you go. Nice tight little bundle there. All right, there she is. Put a little bit more rub on, and we'll finish up getting our charcoal and wood fired up. We'll get this baby on. Here's the setup I'm rolling with today. So I have a full chimney here of some lump charcoal. Just putting that down the sides. All right, so my rotisserie runs like that across. I'm just gonna try to even these out, push them to the side. I also have a drip pan here in the middle. Guess I should have went and got that. So we'll get one there and there. I just wanna get my cherry wood going here. Stick a piece on that far side there. Stick a piece on the near side here. And we'll just let that get going. Oh. 
Right, well, we are set up here, so I got the drip pan in there. Now, this is a lot heavier smoke than I was intending on. A um, couple, well, the main factor for that is I believe that this wood would probably be better if I let her dry out till about next spring. So we're going to supplement this with wood chips uh, throughout the cook here. Um, you know, I might find some, some small dryer pieces that I can put in there. But again, we've got the drip pan in there. Rotisserie set, centered over the drip pan. I'm just going to let this baby roll. I have it set on the medium medium setting here. I'm expecting the flames to come up here eventually. So, I think I got it at the right spot. Alright, so I've only been going for about a half hour here. But what I learned when I was doing my rotisserie chicken is that I just don't think it's getting hot enough up there because I've only had one drip of anything come off this into my drip pan. So what I found with the chicken is when it was really starting to cook and really humming it was dripping a lot more frequently. So what I'm going to do here is actually lower this one notch. I just need two hands over here. Like so. Return it. And we'll keep rolling. Come back if I got any updates on success or failures of this. Now we'll just kick it into time lapse and keep rolling. So I thought I'd bring it back here just to share with you what I just did there. So I guess you can call it an experiment, but all my cooks on this far has been, have been an experiment. So I put some wood chunks here from when I split the wood, kind of over the top. This log wasn't burning that great. And over on the left side there, I put another full log. So I just kind of want to just check in flame height, um, burn, just kind of how it goes. and. I mean, with wood, everything's going to be a little bit different. But I'm just trying a couple things there. So I thought I'd interject that into our learning experience today. So we've been going for about an hour and 15 minutes here. Just going to do a little probe. See how we're doing. Up fire side. Yeah, we're about 100 degrees or so. So we got some time. So I'm going to give you guys a little different uh, angle here. Uh, I noticed that the fire was kind of blocking it. Well, the stuff here on what I'm calling my right is kind of close to the the turkey. But I'm going to set the angle a little different here for you guys, and then we're going to keep rolling. But looking good on the outside, that's for darn sure. Oh. 
So I'm getting about close to two hours here. Yeah, about close to two hours. So what I want to do is just stop here, get a temperature reading, because I'm at a point where I need to either put more wood in or not put more wood in. I might just spread it across the bottom is what I think I'm going to do here. Took the drip pan out. It, this thing wasn't really dripping at all. So. We didn't really climb there. We're sitting about 122, 133. Okay. And towards the end of 160, I'm just having trouble because I think this is again, it's just a bunch of different pieces of meat in there. I'm finding the, the spot. I guess I'm anywhere from the 120s to the one. I guess my, my baseline or my. where I'm hitting the most is in the 130s. So, what I'm going to do here. Instead of adding a ton more wood, I'm just going to kind of spread the fire uh, across the bottom. Actually raise this up. I might add one piece across. Spread this out, add a piece of wood down the center, and keep rolling. So I'm going to get another check on it here, and then I'm starting to get pretty crispy on a couple spots on the outside, so I'm hoping I'm almost there. Yeah, it's kind of depending on where I'm probing it. So I got a ways to go it looks like. So what I'm going to do here is actually since I'm so crispy, on a couple spots I'm gonna wrap it in foil and keep going. I just wanna cook it but I don't want any more uh, coloring on the outside. So let's give it a shot. All right, let's wrap this one up here. So total cook time was about two and a half hours. And again, it, it's going to vary based on your flame, how hot it is, positioning, all that kind of stuff. But it turned out fantastic, and I've already had one of these inside. Well, there we go. Go back a little bit. So I made sandwiches with them. And what I found out is just super, super juicy. Just put some uh, Dijon mustard and mayonnaise. Let's have a go. That's some good stuff, and my, and my wife actually made the comment, you know, instead of doing a whole turkey, because, you know, we both really hate carbon turkey, and this was so easy. What I found out is it was in two pieces, and that's why that mash was just easy, just slice, slice, slice. But super juicy, super tender, very flavorful. That rends, puts a little bit on the end, on the, the outside of it. But I uh, highly recommend it. Um, again, having a bunch of fun and learning something every day with this only fire outdoor Santa Maria attachment for the Weber kettle. Hey, if you like the video, make sure you hit that like, button, put a subscribe icon for you right there. Another video right about there. Hey, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.